Welcome to Cujo Sound. This is Unity and Wise Integration. Hi, and welcome to Cujo Sound. So this video here about raycasting, after I recorded it, I kind of realized that it didn't explain everything that it had to well enough. So one of the things that we need to talk about before we start this video is what is a raycast? A raycast is a system that allows you to, from any object in any direction, to throw a line, like draw a ray. You like fire a ray. Like imagine you fire a laser pistol in any direction. The laser can't damage anything, but it will tell you, did it hit something and what came back? It's kind of like if you actually fired a gun in your game and the gun would then have to figure out, did I hit something on the way? You could do that by actually having a projectile physically move, but you can also draw a ray from your gun in the direction that you're shooting. And if it hits an opponent, that opponent dies. So what can we use these raycasts for? Raycasts can be used for a lot of things, but normally they would just be used to check out how far is there to something, what did I actually hit, and so forth. You can do that with footsteps, say in the previous videos where we made footsteps triggers out of changing the switch whenever we enter an area, we could, every time we take a step in our animation code, trigger a raycast that goes downwards and then tells us the name of the material that it hit. That would be if it hit, let's say, grass, then we set the switch to grass right before we play the, the footstep sound. Or if it was dirt, it would set the switch to dirt. In this case, we are going to make a video about throwing a raycast from any object that is looping and constantly playing. What it will do is that it will throw a raycast always from the object towards the player. And if it does not hit the player, then it will set an RTPC, which will then be used in WISE to occlude the sound of this object. It can sound very advanced, but it really isn't. Check out this video. Hopefully you'll benefit from it still. If you have any questions, fire away in the comments below and let's get started. And if it's too complex or something is missing, I'll gladly make a new one for you. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe in the end. Enjoy. Welcome back to Cujo Sound. This is Bjorn Jacobson speaking. And in this video, we are going to go over how raycasts work. Now, raycasting, it can seem a little bit advanced and it can seem very difficult to do, but it is not. A lot of programmers and other game devs might tell you that raycasting is very expensive, you shouldn't use it and so on, but that to me depends entirely on what I get in return. Basically, you can have as many raycasts as you want as long as you make sure that you get something in return that is valid. In this case, we are going to use it to be generating basic form of occlusion on the fire barrels that we have. But you could also be using raycasts in a lot of other ways, such as triggering footsteps, checking what material you're stepping on, and so on. As long as your raycast is not constant and only triggered whenever you need it, sometimes you need a constant raycast, which we will in the fire barrel situation, but sometimes it's also just fired whenever you need it, which will be done in the footstep case, which will be in the footstep case. And we'll go over all those and later we'll be creating some videos about how to be using this creatively. Now, let's get started. We have fire barrels here. And if you remember, then we have this prefab here of the fire barrels. We have our prefab, which is the wise audio emitter that we created, which is part of the fire barrel prefab. So we basically have a prefab within a prefab. So we can edit this prefab here and change a lot of things, and then it will work for all the fire barrels. So let's see here. So let's go to the audio emitter that we have here. We can always do changes and click apply, and then it will work for all of the audio emitters that we have. The problem is that it overwrites things, so we need to be a little bit careful about if it overrides the one that we have on all the lamp posts and so on. But we'll get to that. Now, what I want is that I want from this audio emitter here which constantly plays this loop of fire within the sphere collider that we have added the sphere collider is this big so whenever you're within this circle the sound starts to play and when you're outside of it the sound stops playing and it plays this loop the start sound and the stop sound that we have over here now what if i am listening to the fire barrel right here from this angle here then we should be able to hear it without any problem but what if i am behind this structure here 
that would be kind of nice to be able to duck it down a little bit. The point of occlusion is not always just to duck it entirely. It can also just be to muffle sounds a little bit. It could also be that we are hiding behind this structure over here and we want it to be kind of muffled. It will make a lot of sense when you add it to all sounds and you can control them individually. So let's get to that. So first, what we're going to do is that we are going to be creating a occlusion raycast script. And what we are going to do in our script, we will get to right now here in the script that we are going to be creating. So what we want is that we want to raycast from the source of the sound to our listener. And we basically want to just say that if there's anything in between the listener, we want to change an RTPC value to whatever number that we say that it should be occluded of. So every object can have a max and minimum value of occlusion or just a max value. And we set our RTPC in Ys to have a slew rate so that it doesn't happen all the time in case you're running in between a lot of trees or something like that. And we'll also get to that. So first we need to define the stuff that we normally need to define. We need to define our public game object, which is our audio listener. There we go. We also need to define some sort of max distance that we want this raycast to work in. We'll get to that in a second. You basically throw a ray from any object to any object, but only within a certain amount of meters. So let's say that if you are outside of the sphere distance of this object, then do not raycast. That would be a smart way to do it. So let's start by making a private float max distance. Occlusion. Here we go. And we also need to be able to define if we are going to use occlusion at all. So let's say public bool use occlusion. And let's just set it to false to begin with. Here we go. We need some sort of string to control which RTBC is going to be controlling our low pass and our volume. So we need some public strings to do that. Public string RTPC low pass. And let's just call it RTPC occlusion low pass. Public string RTPC volume equal RTPC occlusion volume. There we go. Now we also need to define what is our maximum value, like the low pass and the maximum value so that we can alter that if an object is occluded by something, should it be occluded in volume at all? Should it be occluded in low pass at all? Should it be both? Should it be maximum occlusion so that you do not hear the sound at all? Or is it only halfway? So we are going to be creating some floats to control that. Float low pass max equals one and a public float volume max equals one we also need to the typical one make sure that we have some sort of way to debug things so let's make a public pool use debug equals false and we need to be able to define what is the object that we are going to be listening for? So the raycast will throw from this object to another object. And if it hits the right object, which is in our case, the player, then it should not occlude anything. But if it hits anything else, it should occlude itself. But we also need a list of things that it could ignore just so we have a little bit of control. So let's say that we want a public string name of listener. And usually that would be the third person camera because here in Unity, we are going to be throwing the ray from this object towards the third person camera, which we have located here on our third person controller. And as you can see up here, the name right here, this is the value that the ray cast will return. So that is the name that we need to check for because if it hits anything else, it will occlude. We'll get to that and we'll explain it a little bit in detail once we get further. So a public string, ignore type occluder. Just if we want to ignore something. Insert name here. 
Here we go. Now, this means that we define what is our listener, for how long should our ray be thrown, should we be using the ray at all, what RTPCs are we going to be altering, and to what value are we going to be altering them whenever we are being occluded. So in WISE, we need to create these two RTPCs over here. Game parameter, RTPC occlusion low pass. And it's going to be between zero and one like this. And let's just have a slew rate. Let's just say that we want it to be 0 0.2 per second. In that way, it'll take five seconds. That means that we, nah, actually it should be 0 0.4. So it'll take about two and a half seconds before the occlusion really kicks in. So let's just copy paste this one here and then say we have one called volume. Now, what you can do is that we do not on all of these individual objects here um, need to define this. We can always do it at the very top of our hierarchy. So in our case, we have this here, the fireplace, which is burning right nicely right here. And we also have bus and the street light. So what we're going to do is that we are going to be creating a parent of all these which we're going to be making these SFX 3D mixer. Good. So all these now mix through this object here, which means that we can add our RTPC here. Every object underneath this will have their own unique individual RTPC set, which means that our fireplace, one of the instances can be occluded while the other one is not because they have individual IDs. The electric bus and the streetlight will not be occluded because they simply uniquely have a value that goes here. So let's say the voice volume, we want that to be controlled by the volume. And we want our low pass filter to be controlled by our low pass filter here. So let's say here that we have our fireplace. A place like this. And right now, nothing is occluded. So right now, our fireplace is playing. And it goes through this mixer here. Now, what if we suddenly pass through something that should occlude? We basically want it to then muffle the sound, like this. In this case, it'll just, it won't muffle it, it'll just cut the volume. So let's say that we are suddenly walk behind some object. It basically just occludes it whenever we do that. Also, we need the low pass filter. Let's say that we want, whenever we are behind some object, we only want it to muffle a little bit. So our sound plays. And let's say that we, this is the maximum kind of muffle that we want. And this here would usually be normally behind a wall or something like that. So in this case, this would be we are behind a wall and suddenly we come out from behind the wall and then the sound is heard full frontal. It's just slight muffling, but it makes a lot of sense once you have a lot of 3G objects and you walk between all these objects and then they sort of like fade in and out themselves so that then you don't have to control your sound settings all the time and have been be in complete control. You basically are still in complete control, but you leave it to automation when you do it like this. Now, this means that we can just add our script to any sound that we want, and we can have any sound that we locate now under this mixer here, play the way we want, and then it will all be under this, which means that if we say to not use occlusion, this value is just never set per object. We'll get to that. So what we need here in our code, we need to first of all be able to say under start that our max distance occlusion should be equal to the sphere collider, because if we are outside of the sphere collider, of course, the, the of course, the ray cast should not happen at all. So our max distance occlusion should be equal to get component sphere collider like this dot radius. This means that our max distance 
that we are going to be using for our occlusion is the size of the sphere collider that we have on our object. So on our emitter here, we have a sphere collider. In this case, it's 25 meters. So this will be the distance that we will be throwing our ray at. We also need an AK sound engine, register game object, game object, just to make sure, right? So under our update here, what we need to do is that, first of all, we need to define that if we're not going to be using occlusion, so the use occlusion here, if this is false, or if we haven't defined things, then simply do nothing. So if use occlusion or audio listener equals null, return. Nice. So we need to define the direction. We need to define the direction so that it goes from our current object towards where our player is. We need to do that by doing some vector math. Now, we are going to be calling this direction. And so we need to go from our audio listener's vector position minus this current position, which is then the direction that we want. So we define a vector three that we were going to call it direction, funny enough, equal to the audio listeners, audio listener dot transform dot position minus this. And if you just type this, it means this object, this transform dot position. So we now have a vector three, which is equal to the vector three of our audio listener's position and this current object's position. We simply subtract those from each other. That means that we now have the direction that we need to throw our ray in. We also need to define a raycast hit, a raycast hit that we are going to be calling out info. The reason why we call it out info is simply because that's what we get. A raycast hit is a value that our code knows. I have no idea how it's, it works other than this, but this, the raycast hit is the return value that our raycast is going to be returning. So let's call it out info. And we also need a bool. We are going to be calling it hit. And this is going to be equal to physics dot raycast. This dot transform dot position comma. So we want a raycast that goes from this current position in the direction that we defined earlier, which is the two taken from each other. We want out, out, which is a def definite defined value, which we are going to be defining as our out info. So raycast hit, we have out info, and these are, this is the output of the raycast that we put into this word here that we can then use in a minute. And we are going to be doing this over the max distance of max distance occlusion. If you mouse over here, you can actually see what this means. This here says that a bool of physics ray casts needs a vector three origin and a vector three direction. It needs a ray cast hit and a float max distance, which we have then defined as our current position as a vector three and the direction as a vector three. And we have also defined our out info and the max distance that we want our raycast to be in. So this Boolean will only be true if our raycast hits something. So we can always say if hit, first of all, we're going to be debugging. So if use debug, we will say print out info dot collider dot game object dot name. What this means is that if we are using debug, we should get an information here in our console right here. We will get this information out of the out info raycast that we have here. It hit a collider. It will give us the game object's name, which means that if it hits, um, if it hits the terrain, it will simply just write terrain. If it hits sparks it'll write sparks if it hits the third person controller it will write third person controller and if it hits the third person camera it'll write 
third person camera. So further on in our script here, so we're going to be saying that if out info, the name of the object that we're hitting is not equal to the name of the listener. And if it's not the name of our ignored occluder, in this case, we're going to be going to be doing one of these, but you can always add an array of this and check out the ambient areas array system that we made in the previous video. If you want, that'll tell you how to do arrays of this. But if this happens, if the ray that we are throwing hits anything but the name of the listener or an ignored occluder, we say ak sound engine dot set rtpc value. We want the rtpc low pass. And we want that set to be low pass max. And we want that to happen on our game object. Because this script is going to be added to the actual sound to the actual sound emitting object which means that we can just type game object and it'll know that it should add this value onto itself we also need to define that this here should say the the rtpc volume and it should do so with volume max if it hits anything else we just type else like this and then ak sound engine dot set rtpc value rtpc low pass becomes zero and it does so for this game object the same thing goes with our volume now so to summarize we have to find where our listener is we have to find the direction that we want to fire our ray in we fire our ray here we fire a raycast from here in this direction. We get this info out and we only do it within our specified area. If it hits anything, it gives us these different objects here. So let's try here in the game and see if this works. So the first thing that we got to do is we got to take a look at our script over here. It is defined. What is the audio listener? We have not defined that yet. So we are not doing that. We're going to be dragging over our audio listener script that we created here. There we go which means that it will throw a ray from this object towards this object. It should, should, should be fair, fair that it's there. Anyway, now, remember, if we walk behind something, we're just going to keep these values to one because we're going to make an example of it that if we hide behind something, then, of course, these will be totally occluded. Now, insert name here, ignore type occluder. Of course, that doesn't work because... There is no such object named this, but of course it ignores it because there will be no such object named so. The name of the name of our listener will be this specific one here. So let's try and see this if this works. So what we're going to do first is that we are going to say use occlusion. We are also going to say we want to use debug. Now you can see here, it keeps hitting the WWE audio, audio emitter because it's basically hitting itself all the time. So what we are going to do is that we are going to say that if it hits the WW audio emitter, the WW audio emitter, then it ignores it. Use occlusion and use debug. As you can see, right now it's here. So if we walk behind, so if we walk behind something here, Now it hits outpost one, and now it muffles a little bit. And now the sound comes back. Now, what we can do over here in WISE is that we can go into F6 and then say that we want to 
remote connect. We want to connect to our local host. So here we can now see all these physical voices. Now, if we hit F12, you will be able to see all these objects. So in here in Unity, let's try and walk over to one of these objects, and then we will see. So here, in F12, you will be able to see all of these objects once we connect to our local host. Now, what we are going to do is that we are saying here that we have all these audio emitters here in our watches. Now, over here in F5 again, we can say add game parameter to watch list. And then back in F12 under watches here. We can click on any of these audio emitters. We don't know which one is what, but we'll find out. So by name. So here they are. And here we can now see the individual volume and low pass for all of these objects. So you can see down here, now one of these objects is not occluded as it was before. And if we move around a little, let's try and go over here. Then here, you can see these individual values. These are per object that these are being controlled. So this is one RTPC that is set individually per object, which was the smart way of having the RTPC being controlled here on the top mixer instead of having it on each of these individually. Now that's how ray casting basically works. We throw a ray from one object to another and we can check whatever it hits on the way. We can use that information to create a slight occlusion RTPC. This wasn't necessarily the best example of how occlusion works, but there's because there are so many parameters that we can change and we can alter and make sure that it works a lot better and a lot smoother. But now you get the basic idea of how to add a ray cast, check whatever it hits. If it hits something specific, you alter a value. That value you use for something like occluding this. In the next couple of videos, we're going to be going over how we can raycast in a lot of directions and create a lot of other things. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Thanks for watching. I hope really enjoyed making it. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. See you next time. Thank you for watching Kujo Sound. If you want to know more about game audio, Unity, and Wise integrations, please like this video if you enjoyed it and hit subscribe if you want to know more. Or head over to patreon.com forward slash Kujo Sound, where you for as little as $1 a month can help me sustain this channel and the time I take off to create all this material. I would really appreciate it. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Kujo Sound and Bjorn Jacobson signing out.